Welcome back to Blau Dev, everyone. I've gotten a lot of requests recently to go more in depth with the Firestore package and the new Flutter Fire updated packages for Firebase. And so we're gonna dive deeper into that with some CRUD operations and we're gonna mess with some data and we're gonna explore how to utilize that properly. Let's get into it. So I've gone ahead and already shelled out um, a very simple application. It's got four buttons, uh, create, read, update, and delete. And so we're gonna go through these CRUD operations. We've gone through create, read, and I th think update in previous videos, um, but they weren't all together. And so to save you guys the hassle of having to kind of pick and put things together, we're gonna do all of these together in a single application, and we're gonna see how that works. And so I've also set up a file called Flutterfire, and I've got these four methods for each of the operations. And if you're new to using Flutterfire or Firebase in general in your project, then I recommend you check out previous videos on how to set up your project. Um, and then you're gonna wanna make sure that you set up Cloud Firestore. I've put a single user document in here to start the testing, um, but typically, um, we're only going to be storing legitimate user data in here. Um, for more information on how to set this up, again, check out previous videos, um, but we've gone ahead and set this up already. And you're also gonna to wanna to make sure that you install Firebase Core at least 0.5.0 or higher. By the time you view this video, it may be a higher version. So make sure you check out the Flutterfire documentation, which I'll put in the comments below um, in the description, and make sure you use the, mo the most recent version of this. Also, we're gonna be utilizing version 14.0 plus two for Cloud Firestore. And um, yeah, I think that's all we're gonna need. So the first thing that we're gonna do in our methods, um, we're gonna start with create and then kind of go down from there. But whenever you use anything with Firebase now, you need to initialize your application. Um, typically you will do this on like an authentication page or like right when the user enters the app. But since, just given the way that this example is, I'm gonna to have to do this with each new button because we're not gonna be sure which button we're gonna be clicking first. Um, kind of depends, but we need to make sure that it has been initialized in the application um, before we do any operations. The next thing we're gonna do is let's actually first hook this up to our button and make sure it's connected. So we have our create button. I'm going to call await and I need to make this asynchronous. So we're gonna call await create. We're gonna import our file. Okay. And in here, let's do just a simple print hit. And we're not gonna to get too crazy with displaying data and stuff. We're gonna be mainly doing a lot of print statements to show whether things are working or not and checking our database to see if the operations are successful. Uh, I'm gonna have to do a hot reload. Okay, there we go. So it's hitting that method, so that's good. So we can get rid of that. And we are going to do a collection reference. Okay, and we'll call this ref is equal to um, Firebase Firestore. dot instance dot collection and the name of our collection is users and we're creating a document here um, just for reference so what you want to do is you want to map to the collection where you want to store your new document um, or you want to um, store your data and so in this case, we want to just store it inside of this user. So we want to add a new document and I'm going to call it 5678. Um, so then what we're going to do is we're going to say ref dot doc and we're going to name it. So 5678, we're going to name our document and then we're going to call set and set we're gonna say name is equal to test2. And then we'll return. Okay, really simple. It's gonna create a document called 5678 and it's gonna set the name variable to test2. 
If you want to add more variables, you can just do comma and then add in more and more and more. Um, we're just going to add the one for this test. Give that a restart. Click create. Check out our database. Five, six, seven, eight. Test two. Awesome. So really simple. In previous videos, I've showed how to set up user data this way. Um, you reference your collection. You set the document name. You set the value and you're off to the races. So that's create. The next one we want to do is read. So we're going to say async. We're going to say await read. Okay, so first we're going to do Firebase Firestore dot instance dot collection users dot doc. And let's do our five, six, seven, eight. The one we just added in. And then we're going to say dot get. And then we're going to say dot then. So in here, we're going to have a document snapshot. We'll call it snapshot. Okay. Okay. In here, we will have a statement if snapshot dot exists. That means we do have data else return no data found. If it does exist, let's actually, I'm sorry, we don't want to return that. We want to print that. And if we have found something, we want to print Do data. We'll do some string interpolation here. We'll say snapshot dot data dot values. I think. Actually, I don't think we need to do values. I think we just do that. And I think if I'm pretty sure we're going to test it, but I'm pretty sure it's like this. You do something along the lines of um, like that. restart. Yep, there you go. Data is test two. Now if we remove this, it will show us all of the values contained within that document. Let's do restart. There you go. So it's in kind of like a JSON format. So it's snapshot.data with the parentheses. Data is a method. And if you want to access a specific variable, simply put brackets on the end as if you're accessing a JSON object, because you are, and just say the name of your variable. In our case, it's name. One more time. There we go. Okay, so that's how you read. Um, we can do some filtering as well with this. So what we can do is if we don't know what the name of the document is, or we're just looking for all values where a certain variable is equal to something within our documents in that collection. We can instead say where. We can say name. And we can say is equal to. And then we'll say test to. Okay, when we're doing where though, this is going to change how we do our dot then statement. So this is just going to change to a value like that. We're going to get we're going to change this to say just say if snapshot snapshot is not equal to null. We're going to change this to snapshot dot docs dot for each element print element dot to string. So what this is going to do is for each document where it finds a value equal to test2 for the name, it will return that value. Give that one more hot reload. Instance of query document snapshot. And so let's see if we can get even more specific element dot data dot to string. That's what I was missing. There we go. Now let's add another value to our database just so we can see what this looks like. 
So we'll do nine, one, two, three. Field for name will be set to test two. So now we have two values where the name is set to test two. We'll give this guy a hot reload, read, and it prints out both values. So the first iteration through prints it out, second iteration through prints it out. I believe we can also do this. We can do print element.id, and this should give us the document ID, so the name of the document that it's um, working with. There we go. 5678 data, 9123 data. So that's how you can do the where clause. And if you actually look here, um, there's a lot of different things. Is null, is less than or equal to, is less than, is greater than or equal to, is greater than, is equal to. So there's a lot of different querying things that you can do um, with your, your data. Okay, moving on to update. And we're just gonna be modifying the value of one, two, three. So it's set to test, and let's set it to test one. So for update, we're gonna be doing something similar to what we did up here. So we're gonna reuse this collection reference. Okay. Then we're gonna say ref.doc, and then again, we're modifying one, two, three, four dot update and we want to specifically update the name and we want it to be set to test one it's currently set to test let's just double check and make sure that's true yeah it's set to test we want to switch it to test one dot then print success and then Catch error, oh. Print error.toString. Okay, so if it has any issues, it'll print out the error. If it's successful in updating, it'll say success. Let's go ahead and do a restart, reload, update. Success. Let's go check out our database. It's set to test one. Okay, so you have to specify the path to the file where you want to update. Then you need to reference the document, call dot update, and then handle success or error. Last but not least, we're doing delete. So let's hook up our button first. And we are going to delete 9123. So we're actually gonna do almost the same thing that we just did, but instead of calling dot update, we're gonna call dot delete. And we said nine, one, two, three. Okay, let's test it out. Success, and it's gone. So that is your basic CRUD operations when working with Firestore and Flutter, um, really simple. Um, they all follow very similar patterns. The documentation on Flutterfire is really good. So if you have any issues, check that out. Um, their API documentation is also fantastic. And so if you want to learn more about specific where clause querying, um, you can utilize a lot of the same information that they give for their web and JavaScript and other support. Um, they try to stick to consistency among different languages. So if you struggle to find information in Flutter, you can check out some of the other languages and probably get the answer you're looking for. If you found this video useful, make sure you click that like button and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.